Hey guys, I wanted to give you some information on the project that you're getting ready to work on, the songs of your life. And I can't wait to see what some, some of the songs you guys choose and some of the events that have happened to you. One of the books that came to mind when I was thinking about this project was Solo by Kwame Alexander. The entire book is about Blade's life. Um, he's had some tragedy. His mom passed away early in his life, and he's gone to live with his dad, um, who is a former rock star, very popular, um, but has dealt with addiction. And so he's been in and out of rehab and hasn't been there for Blade. And so I'm going to share a little bit from Kwame Alexander about this book and how music was so important. You may recognize him as the one who wrote the crossover and booked. Um, and this is just another great book by him. I decided to write solo because I love music. I've been a music fan since, I mean, since I was a kid. I mean, I listen to a lot of gospel. Um, when I write books, I listen to jazz. When I'm on my way to a book signing or a school visit, it's always hip hop. When I was in high school, it was all about rock. It was all about that energy and that fervor and that verve. And I wanted to write a story where I could talk about that kind of music, where I could talk about, you know, I could have the energy of that kind of music sort of rise off the page. I mean, so music was the frame, but I'm also, I'm in love with love. So I wanted to write about love. I wanted to write a love story about, you know, this idea of if you want to receive it, you got to give it. And if you want to give it, you got to have it. So how do you have love? You know, it's sort of an oxymoron. How do you have love and you're looking for it at the same time? And that's really what a lot of young people deal with. I know it's what I dealt with. And I wanted to write that story about this young man who's trying to find love and and the music sort of helps him find So Blade um, has been honored as the salutorian of his class. He's the second highest ranking student in his class. And he's been asked to give a speech. And because he's really talented as a singer songwriter, he's going to sing. And he's super excited about it. He stresses over it, has the perfect song. So I'm going to read to you a little bit, but there's a song that goes along with this that he lists in the book that Kwame Alexander mentions. So this is when the lights go out by the black keys. And it's just going to play um, as I read. Graduation day. From the stage, I see chapel blow me a kiss. I get so lost in her deep blues, I almost don't hear. Principal Campbell, introduce our salutatorian, Blade Morrison. Climbing the steps to speak, I throw my guitar over my shoulder and walk to center stage and start strumming to loud applause. But I never get to sing because I realize they're not clapping for me. On the biggest stage of my life, in the middle of the most important thing I've ever done, a woman wearing a black helmet, matching bikini, and nothing else rides a red Harley onto the football field with a man in the same outfit, holding a guitar high above his head, screaming, I love rock and roll. I stare in disbelief and shame at chapel, at Principal Campbell, at the graduating class egging him on with cheers and roars. Even after the bike slams into the front of the stage and he gets up, steps on the biker woman, then stumbles his way up the steps to the mic to me. Rock and roll, Blade, my father whispers, hugging me with breath that smells like the devil's mouthwash. My father has a map on his body that tells you everything you don't want to know about him. A sun on his right shoulder, a storm cloud with a bolt of lightning on his left, a blade running down the back of his neck over his heart, still here, but we're not still here. This is the end of the road where he bears his wretched self in front of the world. I walk off stage to the sound of his vomiting and cell phones clicking. I'm not even mad. I'm just done being here, being a Morrison. Hollywood Report. Rock and roll royalty has proven yet again that no one knows how to screw up bigger and better than Rutherford Morrison. Just yesterday, he crashed his son's graduation ceremony, literally, drunk driving into the stage moments before Blade Morrison was to deliver the commencement address. Thankfully, no one was injured, except the already damaged ego and reputation of his only son. 
Rumor has it that Rutherford had been sober for a short period of time, nine days, but who's counting? According to reports, he's headed back to rehab for the ninth time in as many years. But again, who's counting? As much as we all still love his music, if rehab doesn't work, jail or death might be the only fix. So track two, when the lights go out. I try reading, it doesn't help. I try strumming, it doesn't help. I try eating, it doesn't help. So I just lay here with the lights out, listening to the black keys, staring into the desolation of my brokenness, eventually falling into a sea of dreams, drowning in the dark deep beneath the place where dreams have no rules. So Blade's feeling hopeless. He's feeling embarrassed. And so um, he actually makes the song connection in the writing, um, explaining this event. And at this point in the book, he feels unloved and hopeless. And that's pretty much what the song talks about.